What does it mean when your long armor turns around and tells you that they can't use any other thread than the thread that they provide? Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I went to a long armor and she's like, I can't use anything but this thread, this thread, because Millie, she called her long arm Millie. It's an APQS long arm quilting machine. Cause Millie only likes this thread. And that's not true. <laughs> it says she didn't know how to work her tension and when they gave her the long arm or set up the long arm, they set up the tension to that specific thread. And so she was kind of handicapped because she didn't know how to work tension on any other thread. Because if you change threads, threads have different thicknesses, different slicknesses, and you have to kind of find the sweet spot and that takes work. And so that long armor really didn't want to put time and effort into learning how to learn to quilt with different threads because uh, she didn't want to fiddle with it. So let's talk. A while back, I did this video a long time ago. A client came to me and wanted a specific thread color. Well, I didn't have it in the color she wanted it. I only had it in this old sulky thread. Yeah, I only had the color that she really loved in this thread. I don't know, they're old, okay? These threads are very old. I'm having some issues with this thread. It tends to break a lot on me. I don't know if the thread is old or if it's um, just my machine does not like it. In this footage I'm gonna share with you, the thread kept breaking. My long arm, you could literally say, had an emotional problem with the thread. The truth is, it's I didn't have the right tension for this specific thread. My machine works on King Tut. This is a bit thicker, maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's because it was older. I don't know, the thread just kept popping. Literally, it did one little tiny section and it broke. Another little section and it broke, and it's annoying. It is annoying because you want to default to what's easy to use, your normal. You don't want to push yourself, you don't want to challenge, and so you make excuses for not trying other threads because that requires figuring stuff out, and sometimes figuring stuff out can take hours. I'm lightening some of the tension that's on the thread, so before you feed this thread to this looper thing, I only have it fed through once, and usually it goes twice around here. I do have this where I'm having the most success. I was just having it go through once to kind of decrease as much tension as I possibly can, but keep good thread tension on the long arm or on the quilt. But I'm lightening some of the stress on the thread. And so it did really well on this pass. It didn't break as much as it broke on this side. Um, but you can't tell what was going on, but it's like stopping and starting a lot, which is annoying. For some reason, this thread it was just, it didn't like being too tight. It was a very thick thread. It was a 12 weight thread, sulky thread, beautiful thread, but she was also a bit old. So I don't know if because she was old that uh, she was maybe brittle or because she was old, if you put too much pressure on it, she would pop. I also think I had the tension too tight because I use a lighter weight thread. So I also put a drop of oil all the way down, hoping that it would moisturize and re like waken my thread. Um, sometimes I oil the spool, just a little drop of oil across the bottom so I can get it not as brittle if the thread is kind of old. So let me thread it. But it did really well on this pass. It quilted a lot of it down. Um, I may, if it keeps doing that, I may just have it loop through once and then go through the whole threading system. What I'm trying to do is lighten some of the stress on the thread. I'm gonna talk about your bobbin. A bobbin tension Tova thingamajig. 
and some of the tricks I've learned. If you're a long armor, you're gonna need a Tofa tension. There's no way around it. I believe that this will simplify your life. There is ways to figure out bobbin tension by putting a weight on it, having it pull, but ultimately this will save you. My tension that I use is 200 to 250 to three. These are my tensions that I try to stay in and I love this. I bought it probably 15 years ago and I still use this sucker. I have one for my long arm and I have one for my embroidery. Now, if you're a Gamel user or yeah, Statler, my bobbin came with a check spring. I hate the check spring. For some reason, it creates a drag of some kind that doesn't allow my bobbin to flow consistently. It almost checks it back. I went ahead and removed my check spring because I don't like it. It's hard for me to get consistent tension, but that's for me. That's with my machine. Now, Gamel provides these bobbins. I, well, I hate them. <laughs> well, hate's a big word. Um, you know, my machine came with several of them. And what I found is that this bobbin is very heavy. I think they create some type of drag because of the weight of them and maybe I just I don't know they're not my jam I buy these at Amazon also let me share this these bobbins are three dollars each these are about 30 cents each so I go went to Amazon and I got them and I want you to know that it is open that this whole slit is completely open and I buy a package of a hundred for like $35 or $30. The Nova bobbins, these work just as great. They're real light, they're aluminum. The only difference that I wish that these had were a slit so you could pull the thread through and while you're winding the bobbin, it catches. But you know, hey, uh, these are a little bit more expensive, probably like a dollar each. They look like this. They last forever. And the only issue that you may have is you may bend them and that can be a factor in your tension. Okay, let's talk bobbin winder. I love this Innova. Gamel came with one. I got my Gamel in 2009. So if you've had your Gamel a long time, you know what I'm talking about. It was a pedal system where you had to push a pedal and it wound it. It wound my bobbins very inconsistent. I was managing the bobbin winder constantly and so I tried this one out. I love this bobbin winder. It has one for your M bobbins, for your L bobbins. So this is kind of like a versatile, versatile little winder. Look how beautiful this winds my thread. It is even throughout the whole spool. How even it's wound to a full one, to a mid full, to an almost empty. I think that's really important to have consistent, beautiful tension. It's how it is wound on your bobbin. This does affect your tension because it is putting, pulling the thread unevenly from one area to the next. It is heavier on one side of the bobbin and lighter on the other side of the bobbin. And so when the thread is being pulled, it does affect tension because of the weight distribution inside the bobbin. So here's my bobbin and I'm going to go ahead and put a washer in and what I do is I put a drop of oil. Here is a completely full bobbin. Now I put it where the thread is down, pull the bobbin and pull it up. My bobbin rotates clockwise, your bobbin rotates counterclockwise and I don't like it this way because I've noticed that the thread pops out of this system and I have to reset it. So I found for me, the thread down, pop it in. It's almost because it's almost like a, like from down up, it hooks it and because it's hooking it, it grabs it. And now you see the thread, the bobbin going. The reason a tub of tension is important is because once you have your tension on your tova, all you have to do is work the tension on your top of your long arm. So here, my tension, it's at one of, uh, 150. I need a tightener. So at two, 250 or 200 is my sweet spot. And you can see my King Tut is a thicker thread and so the tension is tighter. And you can see how it's pulling. When it pulls quickly, it gets tighter. And so what I would do, and you want to pull quickly because the long arm is not going to pull slowly. 
And so now you can see that if I pull quicker, and do you see how when I'm pulling quickly, she just stays on that tension. You can see lint there. And when you open the bobbin, if it's a very linty thread, you could see lint inside the Magic Bobbin Genie. So what I do is I get a little brush and I clean inside of it. And a little bit is not a big deal, but if you're doing a big quilt that has a lot of cotton batting in it or the thread is very linty, all thread will lint. Anytime I put a brand new thread, I check my bobbin tension because I have this really wonderful tool and it really helps a lot. Also when I'm cleaning, I'm putting a brand new bobbin, I make sure that I remove any lint and then I check the bobbin, clean it also while I'm cleaning the brush, put oil on the check spring. I also put oil here, like another drop, so it kind of keeps on being lubricated and then I start working on the new bobbin. If you have a long arm and you have a long arm business, you need to be able to use all different types of threads. You're missing out on a world, a whole new world. Oh Lord Jesus, so fine silk threads. You could also use uh, metallic threads, glow in the dark threads. Like you've literally shut your world down if you don't know how to deal with tension. You literally closed a whole new world of possibilities. Color tensions, YLI, Omni thread, so fine silks. Like you want to miss out on threads? Why? When all you have to do is learn how to do and work your tension on your long arm? Come on, you can do it. I'm your biggest cheerleader and I'm gonna show you some of the tricks that work for me and what I've learned. So let me share with you the top tension. On your machine, you have all these gauges. So your top tension starts here and it travels through here and this is a tensioner. But you can also lighten or tighten your tension by winding this. This is supposed to be wound more, believe it or not. But I only have it once. So this is wound twice, usually through Gamel's um, schematics. And here you have this going through here. And this is a tensioner, so you can tighten or loosen your tension here. I don't tend to mess with this a lot because once you have the sweet spot, you don't want to mess with it. This is also another way of thread tensioning. You can literally loop this one time, twice, three times, like where it loops on the bottom and loops around. And that changes your tension. And you can also tighten or loosen this little sweet thing. Now this is what works your top tension. You already have the tension for your bobbin set. You don't have to even think about down here. Now all you have to do is readjust these areas to make sure that they work. Now, the thicker the thread, you, the looser you want to loosen a bit, just a tinge. So a lot of times when I'm working on my tension, this is what I kind of play with. And this is where I start. The thicker the thread, I will loosen this an eighth. And if it doesn't help, I'll loosen it a little bit more. Just a little bit goes a long way. Now, if it's a very fine, thinner thread, it's gonna go through here very quickly, so you need to tighten the thread. Like I said, tighten it a tinge, just a bit. And if that doesn't work, let's say there's too much tension. So in the video I was doing, the thread kept popping. So what I ended up doing, to remove some of the tension, it's I removed the thread from looping through here because this creates a tension. And I didn't change this because this is how I normally have it, but I removed the thread so I don't have to fiddle with this because I don't want to readjust it when I put my regular threads in. So I just loosened this and I also only had this wound once. I allowed the machine to long arm quilt it and quilt a certain area and then the thread broke again. I know that I lightened the tension here and here, but the thread kept breaking. So what I did is I removed, because at the time I had this looped, 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 
a couple times. I removed the looping and only looped it once or twice like this. And then I went back and started the machine and had it quilted and it still kept breaking. So what I ended up doing is just having it loop through here and go down. When it went down to here, I went ahead and started quilting it again. And if the thread kept breaking, now I'm going to start loosening this. And a lot of times just loosening this adjustment fixes it. And sometimes if you have the thread breaking as you're quilting, it is the tension is too tight here and here. So I just remove a loop, rethread it, try it, and then if it pops again, removed another loop, thread it, try it, and then you'll see as I long armed how I changed the threading. And then I found that sweet spot because you do want your long arm to be able to quilt all the way across without stopping other than feeding the bobbin. Now, of course, sometimes the thread needle is going to break and that's okay, but you don't want it to break after two minutes of quilting. Yo, know, it's okay if it breaks, like sometimes my needle will break because it went through a thick seam or the batting is too thick because I'm Frankensteining it. I figured out the sweet spot for this thread. I, um, I don't know if you see a slight drop of oil to moisturize the thread. It doesn't do anything to the quilt. It doesn't even stain the quilt at all. Um, I rolled that twice and I only have this looping once and then I'm going through the same regular process. I also took it off that weird hook and so I'm lightening some of the tension on the thread. It broke once um, and then it stopped breaking. So there's this like process of not having so tight that the thread pops all the time and also not having it so loose to where your tension on the quilt is horrible. So you can see the tension is really pretty. You're not getting the eyelashes here. And then on the back. without stopping once. Yay! <laughs> I found the sweet spot. So this row did like took like half the time to quilt. Thank you, Jesus. Which took did a whole lot faster, thank you, Jesus. It only broke once. And we're on the second section of this um, row area of the quilt. So it only broke once on this row and I'm so good, it's right there. So it went, did all of this before it even broke. So it's doing really good. I think I got the sweet spot for the thread. And um, hopefully instead of it taking a trillion hours to do row one and I could do row one and two at the same, two and three and the amount of time it took me to do row one. Looking at the starts and at the tension of my thread in the back because I've done a lot of kind of finagling with the, the thread here, but you want to have it with at least tension as possible to where the thread does not break and it goes through the process comfortably to the point that it also does beautiful tension on the back of your quilt and beautiful tension on the front of your quilt. And that's what you want. You want, even though you want your machine to like the thread and not keep breaking, but also to what matters most is that the tension is pretty. And I think it looks lovely. And look, you can see it from the table, how pretty it is. <laughs> that lady told me, Millie only likes this certain type of thread. The poor girl. Uh, Long arms are not against you for or against certain types of threads. What happened is when her long arm was set up, whoever set it up for her set up the tension based on that thread and now she's imprisoned to only use that thread. That's horrible. It's okay to play with your tension and your thread tensions on the top and on your bobbin. As a matter of fact, once you learn this, you can try any thread. Take it from someone who has. I love threads. 
Left Reds. 